Hi, I'm James. Let's take a look at how to use the Video Player plugin from Zero Code. But before we jump in, before we get started, if you need help with anything we're going to talk about today, uh, or just help generally in building your app or your product, get in touch with us at zerocode.com, uh, this site here. Uh, Zero Code is the largest maker of plugins for Bubble, as well as the top gold tier Bubble agency. So we can help you build any web app, any mobile app or AI product, uh, or just help you automate your business and make things run more smoothly. We've got almost 10 years of experience and we deliver projects quickly and super professionally. While you're there, make sure you check out zerocode.com slash plugins. This is the full list of all the plugins we make and there's like over 700 of them. So there's something there to cover pretty much everything your app could possibly need to do. Uh, for example, you know, there's uh, Stripe Marketplace Express. This helps you accept credit card payments on your app. Uh, there's Mapbox Maps and this gives all sorts of maps functionality. Uh, this one's really good for saving on Bubble's hosting costs. This is AWS File Uploader, so you can store your files on your own S3 bucket. Uh, there's Air Calendar, there's Air Chat and Messaging. There's so many more there, so definitely explore that and check that out. Okay, so the fun part. Let's have a look at the Video Player plugin itself. So as a brief overview, this gives you some really powerful and really customizable video capabilities for your Bubble app. Uh, you can either bring in static video files from your database, or you can link to YouTube or Vimeo URLs to display them in the player as well. And there's a bunch you can customize to make sure this is really branded to your app and, make, and feels really, really native. Um, but on the plugin page here, a few things to keep in mind first. There's a bunch here that'll really help with installing and, and setting up and, and all that sort of thing. First thing, the live demo button here. This will open up a public facing, uh, already configured app with the plugin. Uh, with all functionality added in, so you can experience it as a user would experience it and test it out yourself. You've got the player, you've got all the you know, customizable controls, the playlist, repeating groups, all the fun stuff. So test that first. There's also the documentation here. So this goes really in depth onto every capability that the plugin has. All the parameters and properties you can change, all the actions, and some example workflows that you might want to check out as you're setting it up yourself. Uh, there's also down here the intercom chat bubble. So any questions you have as you're setting this up or questions you might have about the plugin before you uh, set it up, send a message there. Uh, we'll get right back to you and, and, and help you out with that. Last thing, the demo editor. So this will open up the actual bubble editor with the plugin installed um, with everything set up from that demo app uh, that we saw a second ago. So you can kind of go in and reverse engineer and pull it apart and, and see how it all works, check out the workflows and make sure that it's working for what you're intending uh, to do with it in your app. Okay, cool. So let's um, let's build something together and then build a bit of a real world use case together to get you started. So first things first, let's look at how to actually get the plugin in your app. So from your main bubble editor here, click on the plugins tab here on the left-hand side. Now I've already got this one installed, so ignore that, you won't see that. Instead, click the add plugins button in the top right here. And in the search bar, type video layer. And you'll see this show up, Video Player by Zero Code. Now you'll have two options here. You can either do a once-off purchase or you can subscribe. Now subscribing is the most risk-free way to try this plugin. You're charged on a pro rata basis. So you're only charged for the days you actually use it. Um, which means if you sign up and cancel it after one day, it'll be $6 divided by 30. That's all you'll pay for that one day. So really cheap, really risk-free. Cool. That's all you need to do. Once it's installed, you'll see it listed here among your installed plugins, uh, and you'll now have access to a bunch of new actions and events in your workflows, uh, like playing and pausing, jumping to specific um, playback positions, displaying all the video-specific information on the front end, and a bunch more we're going to look at. Okay, now that we have the plugin installed, let's look at a specific use case, like how you might use this in a real app. So I've prepared a screen here. This could be part of the onboarding for your app, where you're welcoming new users to their dashboard, and you want to show a video here to welcome them personally or showcase a part of the app or show a bit of a tutorial or an onboarding or anything like this. Okay, so to add a new video player to this page, what I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll down and find the new video player element here. And I'm going to drag it into the container I've set up here already. Uh, and this will appear in your sidebar once you've got the plugin installed. So install that first and then you'll see that there. Now that this is in our editor, let's have a look at some of the options we have here. To start with, this field here is where we specify the video file that's going to be playing in our player. Now this can be a URL to a YouTube video or a Vimeo video, or it can be dynamic data that links directly to our database for a video file we have saved there. Underneath that we have a bunch of parameters and things we can customize and control, things like the poster image, so the thumbnail, uh, things like the video playback speed, 
hiding and showing certain controls like the full screen button, the, um, the controls, the playback controls, whether the video auto plays, whether it loops, the color of all the controls. Uh, and then below that, even things like whether the video auto plays uh, when it scrolls into viewport, uh, starting and stopping exact parts of the video, and even subtitles. So have a play around with those. There's also the documentation we looked at before that goes into detail for all of these. And if we jump over to the workflow tab here, you'll see a bunch of new options. Actually, let me just start a test workflow for this. Uh, here we go. We'll see a bunch of new actions we can do related to the video player here with playing video, uh, playing video players, stopping video players, um, and being able to control everything through our workflows as well. Okay, so I'm going to delete that uh, test workflow we just put in there, uh, and I'll go back to the canvas. Cool. So for our demo app uh, we're building here together, I'm going to paste a YouTube URL in here. And I'm going to adjust a few of the other parameters. I'm going to set it to play on mouse hover. That sounds fun. I'm going to mute the video. And I'm going to disable the control bar. I'm also going to adjust the corner radius so it matches my design a little bit better. I'll put an 8 in there. Okay, cool. Let's preview it and see what we got. Great, looking good. We have our modal. We have our YouTube video in place. And if I move my mouse over, there we go. We have the video starting to play. We have no control bar. It's on mute. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. All right, so let's go a bit further and adjust a few other things. Okay, so I actually have a hidden group here that I've made earlier. I'm going to show that. Now, this is custom play and pause buttons that I've set up earlier. Uh, and we're going to link them to the video so that we can control the video using our own buttons. So I'm going to change this to be visible on page load. I had it hidden before. And I'm going to go back to my video, and I'm going to disable the play on mouse hover uh, effect we had from the previous step as, you know, I want this now to be controlled by the play button instead. So we have a play button. Let's add a workflow to start the video. I'm going to click the button and click add workflow. And what we will do, we'll go element actions, play a video player. It's already selected the only video player I have on the, uh, on the screen. And that's pretty much it. That's as easy as it is. Let's check it out. Cool, we have our video, we have our modal, and if I click the play button, there we go, video is playing. Nice. All right, let's do the other side of it. We want it to be able to pause. So, that's not the right screen. There we are. <laughs> okay, so we have a pause button here. Now, it's set to be hidden by default, as there's no reason to show a pause button when a video is already paused. So what I'm going to do now is go to the workflow and create a new event. Now, I want this to happen when a video player is playing. So this is our option here. A new video player is playing. It's already selected the only video player I have on the page. Great. And when this is playing, I want to show an element. And what that element is, is the pause button. Nice. Now, also when this is playing, I want to hide the play button because I, there's no reason to have a play button there when a video is already playing. So I will hide. The play button. All right, let's try it out. We'll refresh this. Great. I'm going to press play. There we go. Play has disappeared. Pause has appeared. Doesn't do anything yet though, so that's our last step. So I'm going to jump back in here. Uh, we'll go back to our canvas here. I'm going to select the pause button just here in the sidebar, and we'll add a workflow. I mean, it's hidden right now, so we can show it if we like to make sure it's selected. Cool. I'll add a workflow, and when this is clicked, I want to element actions, pause a video player. And you'll see there, we have a lot of options there from this video player plugin. There's a lot you can do, muting, unmuting, um, play from a list for repeating groups, lots of fun stuff. But for now, we're just going to pause a new video player. It's the only video player uh, that we you know, have on the page. But we also need to hide and show the buttons again. So when the pause is clicked, we want to hide pause. Um, because the video will already be paused and there's no reason to have the pause button. And the same thing for the play button. So we can start the video again. We will show the play button. Great. So we now have three workflows. The first is when the play button is clicked, play the video. When the video is playing, hide the play button and show the pause button. And when the pause button is clicked, pause the video, hide the pause button and show the play button. Nice and straightforward. Let's try out everything all together. All right, cool. We have our modal, uh, we have the video in place, and we have a play button. So I'll click play. The video starts playing. It's on mute. We still have no control bar because that's what we set in our parameters. The pause button's appeared. 
And if I click pause again, the video should pause and we should see our play button once more. There we go. And we can keep doing that. And it works nicely. It works just as we want it to, nice and easy. So we now have the video player fully branded to match the feel of our app. And we have fully customized playback controls on that same app. So that's how quick and easy it is to get set up with this plugin. And that's kind of the core functionality that most apps would need from a video player within their app. But as I mentioned earlier, there is so much more that this plugin can do. So do have a play with the demo app here and explore the full potential of all the functionality that's on offer here. Playlists and repeating groups and all sorts of fun stuff. As I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, any worries, any troubles setting up this plugin and making it work within your app, don't hesitate to reach out. There's the intercom widget on our website. There's our support email, support at zerocode.com. Get in touch. We'd love to help out. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out all the other plugins we have at zerocode.com slash plugins and reach out if you have any questions or need help building your application. Happy building.